What's up guys, it's Mike back here. We're back in the garage today because, you know, the weather is not really permitting. So uh, this video, as you can see by the title, is about the Tektro Origa, or I think that's how it's pronounced. I don't know, butchered the name, but it's Tetro. Tetro's been a brand name around for a long, long time, a couple decades now, I'd say. Don't know uh, the exact amount. But uh, we're gonna be talking about the Origa hydraulic brakes. So um, just recently put these on my bike. Uh, I needed uh, replacements uh, as far as, cause I was running cable actuated mechanical disc brakes and you know, that's kind of lame. Doesn't really work out for a hard I ride. So uh, let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, give you a once over on the bike. This is my custom built hardtail. Of course it's a 29er. Uh, got my own custom logo on there. Heavy bicycles, you know. Donuts because donuts are awesome. This is a uh, a Trek Roscoe frame, I believe. I forget. Uh, it's one of the Trek frames, uh, but repainted it. I love the pumpkin orange. Don't know why, but I do. Uh, of course, one by drive train. I accept, of course, you know, that's a China crank, but it works. Uh, but today we're not talking about that. We are talking about these bad boys right there. So uh, that's the rear, of course, and that's the uh, front. And then, of course, comes with the uh, Tetro rotors. And uh, these are dual cylinders. We'll go all the way down through here. Drive through there and through there. Uh, I will say, um, after breaking these in, you know, bedding them in, and everything uh, was a little bit of a process. Uh, the pads came shiny, so I had to sand them down. And uh, after I sanded down the pads and uh, re-sanded down the rotors, uh, perfect. Like the hydraulics, literally one finger breaking going down the mountain or trails, whatever you decide to ride on. So uh, these aren't bad. I uh, got these for under a hundred, we're gonna say. And I ended up getting them off Amazon, not sponsored or anything. Uh, but finally got to take them out for the uh, for the first time yesterday over at San Lee Park in uh, Sanford, North Carolina. Uh, pretty technical trails. Uh, let's just say these things saved my life numerous times on that trail. So I went in that trail blind. But as far as that, literally this is one finger breaking. I uh, literally cannot complain. I mean, I got set up right there. I would move them in more. But if you wanted two fingers, you could. But I always break it one finger. Oh, God. Am I my bike about to fall over but yeah they come pre-bled which is pretty great i know how to bleed brakes car and on a bike but frankly on a bike it's a pain in the butt to get all the air bubbles out if you don't do it right so i'm pretty stoked that they were pre-bled so the fronts of course i just they're external but uh for the time being i ended up just uh i ended up just um running them externally on the bike instead of doing the internal so when i bleed them i'm gonna end up routing the cable inside because this this is of course you can see internal cable routing but i was being a bum and i didn't really want to have to deal with that bleeding them brand new brakes so they're perfect the way they are but uh, i'm gonna say if i were to rate these out of uh you know like one to five stars i would say for hydraulic brakes that are a hundred dollars that are not from china that are literally a brand name that's been around these are a five and this is going from experience. I've ran Tektros on BMX racing bikes. I've ran uh, Tektros on uh, Tektro rim brakes back when I first got into mountain biking back in like mid 2000s before disc brakes was even like a thing, you know? And so uh, I would say if you're shooting for uh, hydraulic disc brakes, um, shoot for these ones. Uh, you're gonna see like other brands like Zoom and all that stuff. I literally bought those trash. Literally trash. Just, it's not worth your life, man, to cheap out. I mean, these were under 100 bucks, and they came with the rotors, didn't need the rotors or anything. But um, on my custom belt hardtail, uh, they're perfect. So, but I at least go over this. But if you guys like this video, give a review. I didn't see any videos on this on YouTube, but uh, these are pretty legit. You can just... You can hear the, the, the wall right there. It's just so great. One finger breaking, man. Perfect. But uh, 
I'll make another video about this this beast that I built. 130 millimeter uh, Rockstar Judy's. Of course, I extended them. They came 100 mil, but uh, the 2000 these are 2021s. Uh, they do extend to 130 if you remove the spacer. So bam, I literally have 130 millimeters of uh, fork right here, and uh, it's officially a trail bike. Uh, technically, it's like a cross country frame. But because of the head tube angle, the head tube angle is at 67. And so that makes it a trail bike. So it can handle those downhills pretty good. I wouldn't suggest taking a hardtail downhill mountain biking. But you know what? There's a dude called Blake from GMBM. He rips a hardtail all the time. So hardtail is my life. Uh, won't buy a full sus anytime soon because hardtails are gnarly, man. But thanks for tuning in and hope to see you guys again.